NBA 2K, a video game series known to the majority of the public being the go-to basketball sim video game. If you like basketball and you're gonna play a basketball game, you're probably gonna play NBA 2K, okay? And despite 2K's reputation of recycling material, upcharging for virtual currency, I have bought it every year for the past eight years. That's right, you're looking at the most expensive version of the game every year since 2017. And I finally think I'm done. This video is gonna be broken up into three sections. Section one, the history of NBA 2K. Section two, my career as an NBA 2K player. And section three, why I won't be buying any more of these games. And without further ado, let's hop into why I'm done giving 2K all of my precious earned dollars every year for the exact same gaming experience. I had a cooler title in my head, I'm not gonna lie. According to Wikipedia, NBA 2K is a series of basketball sports simulation video games developed by Visual Concepts and released annually since 1999. The premise of the series is to emulate the sport of basketball and more specifically, the National Basketball Association. So as I said before, if you're a fan of the NBA, you play basketball, you like basketball, you watch basketball, you've most likely played an NBA 2K game. For the most part, NBA 2K has been the go-to basketball game for basketball gamers over the past couple years, being rivaled by the other sports game creator, EA Sports, who you may know makes FIFA, makes Madden. But EA Sports NBA Live eventually was not a match and cannot compete with 2K. They upcharge virtual currency. It's a scam, they just want your money. And you may or may not be correct. But honestly, 2K in terms of graphics and gameplay over the years is good. Like, is it's factually good. And it's the best basketball game you're gonna get. You're not gonna get any better. There's no rival that's done it better in terms of feel, movement. Like, no one's beating it, okay? No one's beating it. As much as we wanna hate, especially when you're in the community or outside, no one's beating what 2K is doing, okay? And they and they know it. With immersive game modes like Play Now, My Career, My Team, The Park, NBA 2K has standed the test of time. Not only has 2K captured the fandom and love for the NBA, but it's also introduced new fans to the NBA in general. NBA 2K has become more than just a video game franchise. Honestly, it's an icon. I'm not even trying to suck up or nothing, but like they're always gonna get the sales every year. People just wanna have the game just to have when friends come over, boys come over, you can hop on 2K, play each other real quick and have a fun time, right? With all the positivity being said, that still begs the question, why am I done playing and buying these games? To give you a hint of what's to come, I've pretty much realized that I feel like I'm forcing myself to play these games and I'm not actually wanting to play these games. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not actually having fun, okay? Which is crazy because I built my whole small little niche brand YouTube channel around basketball in the NBA 2K franchise. Like that's what I built it around because I was so, and still am so in love with the sport and game of basketball in general. Through unfinished games, VC prices, and public controversy, let's now hop into my experience playing and buying 2K every single year for the past eight years. And that's right, eight years, man. Probably at least 200 to 500 hours, if not more than that, each year I've bought it, man. I'm, this is basically a plea for help, okay? This is a help call desk, please someone. So let's go all the way back to a young Josh the Sauce. Someone who played, started playing basketball when he was five and has loved it ever since and has played it every year. But was also an avid gamer. I loved video games, I played I started out playing Game Boys, Crash Bandicoot, Pokemon, all that stuff. So once I got older, it was inevitable that I would end up playing a basketball video game. So let's start with NBA 2K17 coming out in 2016. Now, this wasn't my first NBA 2K. I had played 2K16 religiously and played a couple years before that. But this is my first copy that I still own. And yes, it is the Legend Edition Gold Kobe Bryant cover. Still in the original cardboard, it's getting a little yellow. Holy freaking crap. I freaking forgot it came with a freaking magnet, dog. And oh my goodness, the good old days. The times where I went to school, did my homework at school, came home, played park with the boys all night, and repeated that three times a week on average, and then at least eight hours on the weekend. Probably my most hours played is in this version of the game. It's also, in a lot of people's minds, one of the better games. People have a lot of fond memories of this game, and I don't think that's just nostalgia. I think it had everything you needed in a 2K game without going overboard. It had your park, it had your play now, it had your my team, but you weren't getting brand shot in the face, and you weren't getting 
VC price this shot in your face. Like if VC was still a thing, don't get me wrong, but there were systems in the game like, like park rep where once you got to legend one, it made you a 96 overall and 97 overall. So even though someone could pay to get their character to a 95 overall, if you really want it to be 96, 97, 98, you actually had to earn it and play the game. Now let's move on to 2K18. That's right, another Legend Edition Gold Shack one with another magnet inside. I haven't opened these in forever. If you're a 2K player, gamer, person, which I'm assuming so if you're clicking this video, this game sucked. This was the worst year of 2K. I think everyone can agree. This game was freaking trash. This was the first year NBA 2K tried to introduce the city. If you don't know what park is in the city, I need to explain park. I forgot to explain park for those who are new. Park is basically where you can take your created player and go play three on three and two on two on street ball courts. And this year they tried to introduce the city, which was like a place where there was courts over here and then there were stores where you can go buy clothes over there. And there was a workout gym in the arena and you could run between them all. Problem was, this was the worst year animation and gameplay wise. It was weird. They, they had a lot going for it and they also took away park rep for 99 rep. Despite the game being the worst year, I still played more hours than I thought of this year's game. But I think it was because the city was such a good marketing pull. And this is where you can start to see VC prices creeping in. You can start to see branding creeping in. Lots of brands trying to put, put their brand out there. You always had your Nike, but now you're getting like stores for those specific brands that you literally bring your character and walk it to to go buy that item with the virtual currency that you buy with your real money. End off the PS4 era. Let's jump really quick to 2K19 and 2K20. These games were virtually the same, I'm not gonna lie. As I said, 2K tends to recopy their assets and just bring it over. So yes, we have the city again in this year in your standard my team, but the city is the same in both games, if I'm not mistaken. I played both these games a lot. 2K19 was a really fun game, super solid gameplay wise. It had dodgeball where like I actually wanted to play. So in the city, there was this event called dodgeball this is where you start seeing events introduced in the games. I just want to preface, this isn't a full like retrospective or deep dive into the NBA 2K series. I could do one at some point, it would be a lot of work. So I'm just glossing over touch points of the series. So if you aren't familiar with it, some of these things I'm saying might not make sense, but there's just way too much to get into to explain the whole series. So that would have to be a separate video. But 2K19 and 2K20, virtually the same game in terms of a look. They all feel a little different, despite what people may think. Me, as someone who plays 2K every year, it's a different game in terms of feel every year. I always notice a difference every year, so I'm not knocking 2K on that. But in terms of visually what we've seen and what was there for events, they're the same. But both really fun. I actually played a lot of 2K20 as well. In all of these games, I had played during my high school years. So holy moly, what a great time. High school and college, man. You look back and you forget how much time you had to play the games and have a great time. That's what this was for me. This represents, honestly, these represent just high school and being a kid, you know what I mean? And like, just the freedom and, and, and no worry of life, okay? No worry of stress, bills, money, food, all that. You're not even worried about that. You're just, you're just playing 2K. <laughs> now let's move into next gen, NBA 2K21. And I'm just realizing now that I've been mistaken. In these games, we had what 2K called the neighborhood, okay? Next gen is where it became the city, which was a big expansive city, not just a neighborhood block, but an entire city with stores, events, pop-up courts. And this was supposed to be amazing. This game right here, Holy frig, me and my squad were hype. This was supposed to be the game to change 2K, the change we've been waiting for, but it was unfinished. Literally, I remember streaming this game. This is when I first started streaming. The city was empty. There was literally nothing going on. It was a big empty city, if you even can call it that. It was an empty city. And really quick, 2K22 is the finished version of 2K21. So again, same assets reused in both these games. This game was definitely unfinished and pushed for a deadline to get money. And it made money, trust me. NBA 2K22 is literally what NBA 2K21 was supposed to be, okay? So this one, big flop, big disappointment. 22 was pretty good. A pretty good time because it's what this one was supposed to be. So you had, you had more of the city filled. You had people roaming the city. You had the parks, you had affiliations back. Shout out to the Vipers. It was a good time. And finally, that brings us to the most current games, which is NBA 2K23 and NBA 2K24, both having their own unique city. You know, the same formula at this point. You have a build, you gotta spend a bunch of EC, 
in a bunch of hours to get that build and, and level it up, right? Just so you can compete in the park. I think uh, I've been getting numb to the game series, okay? I'm kinda, I kinda go in, I'm like, whoa, first month is kinda sick, and then after that, it kinda falls flat, right? And now to end off this video with why I'm probably, most likely, I'm 90% sure I'm not gonna be buying NBA 2K25. Now here's the thing, it sucks to say, I'm not saying NBA 2K are bad games. The big trend on YouTube, if you're not in the 2K community, is to just trash and hate on 2K and say why it's trash. That's pretty much the main thing people do. And that's the main premise of most videos I found. Back in the day, there was lots of creators. Pretty Boy Fredo got a start on 2K. Lots of people who played the game. There was a community around it, it was kind of fun. And now it's just so much filled with the marketing and the money and the brands and it's in your face and you're gonna buy this to buy that to get this to get this boost or you can't compete here. That's what the game has turned into. It's literally become a job for people where you buy the game, you, you spend 100 to 150 bucks on the game, right? You do that. Then you drop another 100 bucks on virtual currency to level up your build so that you're good enough to play online in the park. Because if you don't, you're literally gonna be trash. You're gonna be garbage and you're gonna have a, a terrible time. And you do all that just to play the park and then realize you wanna make a different build. So you have to do that spending cycle again. And then that doesn't include you wanting to look cool, buy shoes, buy jerseys, buy clothes, which you can't earn anymore. Back in the day, I'm talking 2 17, 18, 19, it was kind of easy to earn clothing, VC. You could kind of get it kind of quick. If you played the game, you weren't worried about VC. You leveled up your build, you got clothes, it was good. Now, you pretty much have to spend money to get like what you want. Like there's no there's no way around it. It's kind of unfortunate. And I haven't even, and I've been kind of basing this around park in my career, because that's what I play. But I also play my team. I haven't even touched on my team, the card collecting side of the game. It's basically a game mode where you can play with your team of cards that you get and you have to, to get cards you can open packs you know where i'm going with this packs you know where i'm going pretty much gambling <laughs> so where am i left off i'm gonna i'm a grown adult now it's been eight years since 2k17 came out that's friggin blows my mind as of this recording 2024 and i think i've realized that i was playing 2k just to play 2k because i felt like because i play basketball and like basketball that i'd be wasting my time if i wasn't playing a basketball game i know that sounds crazy a lot of people don't deal with that type of like a thought i was just buying it making my build playing the park trying to make videos and then after that i would just play by myself for for i don't even know why i started to play more story games like horizon the horizon series and the ghost of Tsushima series i've gotten into a new first person shooter called the finals these are games that i actually want to play like these games i actually have to be like i have to literally tell myself and stop myself like no you need to go clean your house or do this you can't play this game whereas 2k i would just be like well i guess i should probably play some 2k right now to level up my player to get to 99 and that's no fun for anybody so I'm not saying someone can't hop into 2K now and have fun, but me as a long time veteran, you know what I mean? A long time goer of the series. I'm not even doing it because I want to at this point. It's just like a routine that every year I have to go out and buy it and play it and do it. If you found this video interesting and informative, please share it with your friends, like, just subscribe. These are all free things you can do. They're free. You don't have to pay. You can just do it. You Boom, do it. You're done. You can come see me another time. Come see my stream, you know what I mean? That's all you gotta do. If you stuck through this long in the video, I really appreciate you listening and watching, man. Means a lot. Kind of give my two cents on a series I've been part of for a long time. And, and please comment down below. I wanna hear a discussion, whether you've been playing for years or you just started playing. Let me know your thoughts on what we just talked about in this video. I'd love to hear it. I'm all for different sides and different sides of the game, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm peacing out. See you later.